my name is Rick and welcome to section 4.3 building a mean IO application from scratch so in the previous video we left off by finishing up our authentication which was great but now we got to get to the core component of our app which is our CRUD pages which is essentially going to allow us to manage our goals our sub goals and our progress towards those goals so we're going to go ahead and be talking about how I actually went ahead and created this because this is in essence pretty much our application that's going to be uh, in the works for our uh, managing our goals code. It's always good to be thinking about the routes and how those routes are going to be handled by your application. And uh, if you come from like a Rails background or a PHP background or even a Java Play background, this is really important for your application. Even if you write it down, if you whiteboard it, whatever the case might be, you have a clear image of kind of what your application has to do at a specific URL. So this is essentially what I did. I went ahead and created the mapping for the client side, which are all these. And I went ahead and created the mapping for the server side, which are all these. And these are the proverbs for the actions that are going to be taken. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and run through these real quick, but I actually want to tell you where I actually came up with these URLs. I actually came up with these URLs based on our uh, use cases. So here's our use cases. Um, we have an admin. He can do goals page. He can do a whole crud on the goals page. Same thing with the sub goal, whole crud on it. And goals page, same as well. And as you can see right now, um, these are all based on here. So we have a root, which is our current year's goal page. We have an about. We have a blog. We have a contact, we have goals, and this displays the actions to take. We have a today, which submits today's progress towards those goals. We have a create, which lets you uh, manage those goals. We have a goals page, which displays all the goals and lets you take actions on them. We can, you can go ahead and create a goals page. And you can also go ahead and update a goals page as well. So pretty much once you get this mapping for the client side, you can just move right over to the server side and, and create those mappings for those URLs as well here. So once you get all that done, you'll be pretty much be able to um, write those routes to your application. So let's go ahead and show you kind of what I mean by uh, routes. So if uh, you watched the previous video, we had a package named known Rick. And actually went ahead and deleted that package because that package didn't really make sense for my application. What kind of package I need is goals. Uh, if you don't remember how to make packages, you can actually type in mean anytime and you can write go right here into package. So it's mean package, whatever your package. So in this example, I did goals. So here we go in our goals package. If you go onto the server and if you go to routes, I went and created three different types of routes. We have our goals routes, we have our pages routes, and we have our sub goals routes. So same thing with the client side. I went ahead and created a routes. We have a goals routes, we have a pages routes. And this is pretty much our application and how we will be able to interact with our data in that application itself. So once you have your routes uh, pretty much mocked up the way you want um, in both uh, the client and the server, and this is based off on you, your use cases and pretty much what you thought of here, you can go ahead and start uh, thinking about your database and your database design before you actually start creating any of the controllers. So uh, for this application, if you come from a SQL background, my previous design from the previous post will make some sense, but the structure is still not clear as I would like it to be. If you're using MongoDB to store your objects, you cannot represent joints in a NoSQL environment. I had to kind of rethink my data and this is, this is kind of what the output I wanted to mock up to my data to be. So I actually went ahead and created this JSON um, fake uh, prototype of the database. And I went and after I created this, I went ahead and redesigned my database. And once I went ahead and re redesigned my database with these schemas, it was pretty easy to implement in um, Mongoose. So if you guys are not familiar with Mongoose, you can actually go to Mongoose and learn more about Mongoose here. But essentially all Mongoose lets you do, it lets you do object modeling on a MongoDB instance. So once you have your design, it's pretty straightforward to do your, uh, your uh, models. So here's my models. We have a goals model, and this is all based on this goal right here. 
as you can see, we have a description. This maps right here to description. We have is completed. This maps right here to is completed, so on and so forth. Same thing with page. We have a page model. We have a page model. We have a sub goal and we have a sub goal schema here. We have a sub goal schema here as well. Now for progress, this is actually, I haven't completed this. This is going to be back in section five. Uh, section five, uh, part five of this tutorial where we're actually going to be doing the progress and um, updating our our sub goals based on our progress. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. So once you have your models done, um, what you have to do next after this is pretty much implement your controllers. And your controllers are um, two different types of uh, ways to do this. Um, you have to do your controllers on the server side and you have to do your controllers on the client side. And your controllers are in essence going to be interacting with um, your uh, services and your models. So what am I talking about? Services are essentially um, the way we interact with our database in the back end. So we have our sub goal services, we have our page services, and we have our goal services. And these map to our models, which are goals, page, and sub goals. And these map to our routes, which are goals, page, and sub goals. As you can see, it's really important to uh, keep this straight in your head because if you don't, you end up with uh, one large file that has a lot of code that doesn't really make a lot of sense. So once you have that figured out, you're going to go ahead and implement your controllers. Um, right here, as you can see, in our server side, we have a goals controller, which lets you do a whole CRUD on the controller. We have a page controller, which lets you, which lets you do a whole entire uh, CRUD on a page. And we have a sub goal, which lets you do a whole CRUD on a sub goal, just like our system requirements called for. So now once you have those in, in place, you want to go back into your uh, client uh, Angular application and do your... Uh, do your uh, business, some of your business logic here and figuring out how this all works. So we have a pages, so you can do a whole crud on the pages. We have our goals, which lets you do a whole crud on our goals. This is a little bit longer because um, our business logic is a little bit different here. And obviously I, I went ahead and separated this other controls called bread. And all this is doing is just creating some breadcrumbs for our application. So once you have your uh, controllers in place, then the next thing to do is to work on your views. Uh, obviously we have a goals view, we have a goals page view, and we have an index. And this index lets you pretty much take an action to uh, whichever of the goals you want to see. So you can, so for example, on goals page, you can go ahead and create a goals page. You can go ahead and um, view the goals page, and you can go ahead and update your goals page. So same thing with the goal. You can go ahead and create a goal, and you can go ahead and see today's, uh, undertake today's goal. And this is create goal page uh, is a little uh, more interactive than when the normal pages would be. And uh, essentially what the create page lets you do is lets you do pretty much the whole entire CRUD on a single page. So this kind of comes back to a single page application, which is what uh, Angular is really good at. This application is still not complete. We're still missing implementing this progress table. Well, they're not called tables, uh, documents, right, in a NoSQL environment. Um, we still have to create this progress document that would essentially help us track our sub goals, which our sub goals track our goals. So now um, in section five, I'll be implement implementing that progress and we'll be talking about uh, a little bit more about that. But I actually went ahead and just wrap up section four because um, this is going to be a uh, pretty much an overview that we just did on the code. And the next video on section four point five we're actually going to go ahead and um i'll actually i'm actually going to go ahead and give you a demo of the application of, of where it stands right now so hopefully you found this video enjoyable if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up follow me on twitter if you have not subscribed to my email list make sure you do because i'm constantly releasing updates about a bunch of different tutorials so until next time we'll see ya